The discovery of antibiotics has been vital for our survival. From treating common ailments to complex organ transplants, antibiotics have saved millions of lives for decades. However, bacteria are quickly becoming resistant to many of the antibiotics we currently use, creating so-called superbugs. By misusing and abusing these antibiotics, we risk losing them forever. All of us alive today are facing an extraordinary epidemic, with new strains of infections we can no longer treat. Known as antibiotic resistance, this has emerged as the biggest threat to modern medicine globally. Without effective antibiotics, the global population is exposed to grave risks, even for easily treatable illnesses. Currently, antibiotics add on an average of up to 20 years to a person's life. But by 2050, antibiotic resistance could kill up to 10 million people globally every year. It's true it's a global challenge, but the challenge is probably the highest in countries like India. I myself have treated infections where not even single antibiotic is effective. It's not just in India, it's a global problem. So patients are dying. We were very happy because it was a girl child. So two days were very fine, but in the evening she started vomiting. As soon as her body was bad, she started to look very different. This baby when it came to us was in a pretty bad shape uh, with low platelets, there was abdominal distension, had multi-organ involvement. The baby acquired some infection. Third day, it was like five antibiotics were given and they were not working. They have sent a blood culture report that would take three days. So they kept on giving her the antibiotic called cholestin. Even the cholestin is not working as it should have worked. We have started a new antibiotic called polymaxane and there might be a possibility that it might also not work. So what we really did was we went all out in terms of treating this multidrug resistant bacteria with sensitive antibiotics. That's how things probably turned. They completed that 14 days uh, course. On 38th day she got discharged. Just like Zoya's story, millions of Indians have been exposed to the hazards of antibiotic misuse. The factors that contribute to this scourge are many. Sanitation and infection control measures in communities and in hospitals. The misuse of antibiotics for common viral infections. Doctors commonly prescribing antibiotics without confirming whether an infection is bacterial or not easy access over the counter, not to mention the large amounts of antibiotics being pumped into what we eat. The list goes on. Pharma industry and scientific community did not progress to match the development of bacteria. Bacteria won the war. The long overuse of these wonder drugs, as they were once called, has now started to show its detrimental effects across the globe. Whole classes of antibiotics have stopped becoming effective. With no new class of antibiotics being discovered to deal with these infections, there is an urgent need for point-of-care diagnostics to aid the healthcare system as a whole. In India especially, with a population of 1.3 billion and only 75,000 hospitals, the rampant spread of superbugs is becoming more and more common. Across the world, Antibiotic resistance is a socio-political issue and not just a medical issue anymore. In India, the bugs are spreading in the community because of sanitation issues. And unless we correct that scenario, how are we going to tackle the challenge? Consumption of antibiotics in India has increased by up to 62% and contributing to this increase as well as the rise in antibiotic resistance is just how convenient and cheap it is to buy antibiotics without a prescription. Taking antibiotics for a viral infection such as the common cold or the flu leads to increased antibiotic resistance. 
To curb this practice, in 2012, we prepared the Chennai Declaration. We wrote that we need to prepare a list of antibiotics where we need to say the second generation and third generation antibiotic should not be dispensed without a prescription. The reason is many Indian villages there are no doctors. And if you say no antibiotic should be dispensed without a doctor's prescription, what are these villages going to do? Are they going to die without essential antibiotics? Radical changes are needed in addressing the global issue of antibiotic resistance so we can control and treat all infections before it is too late. New antibiotics can only be a part of the solution. Globally, we need new innovative diagnostic products and services. If patients knew whether they had a viral or bacterial infection, or if they knew what type of bacteria they were dealing with, then perhaps we could hinder this global crisis. This is where the Longitude Prize steps in. The goal is to protect our antibiotics by equipping healthcare providers with a simple point of care diagnostic to enable more effective and targeted treatment. The £8 million Longitude Prize is currently open, with teams from across the world competing. The prize does not consider any particular test type. Instead, it asks for innovators to fulfill eight criteria. For example, the test must be usable anywhere in the world, be affordable, and provide results within 30 minutes. I can take a swab from the throat, sample of blood or urine or sputum, sent to laboratory. I'll get the result after two, three, or four days. By that time, unnecessary antibiotic usage has already happened. So, if I have a rapid diagnostic test, I can see the patient, take a sample, put it in the machine, ask the patient to wait outside my clinic, call the patient back in half an hour, and I tell him, oh, you don't need an antibiotic. Or oh, you need an antibiotic, and this is the antibiotic. That's the role of Longitude Prize. Helping Longitude Prize and the war against antibiotic resistance is the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, better known as BIRAC, a division set up by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. BIRAC is a not-for-profit company which was set up by the Government of India, Department of Biotechnology, nearly six years back to help create this whole startup ecosystem within the country, to nurture and foster innovation research, connect the industry and academia, and try and see how we could look at affordable product development. The main mission of BIRAC is that in the next couple of years, we do address some of the major societal problems and create a pipeline and an ecosystem to take it forward. Today, teams are competing across the globe for the Grand Longitude Prize. From fresh startups to established research organizations, universities, and diagnostic companies, the singular goal for everyone is to create a definitive diagnostic test that helps solve the problem of global antibiotic resistance. Our vision with this project and with this product development is to really empower a clinician with a tool such that he can quantitatively identify a pathogen and thereby uh, avoid prescribing antibiotics empirically. Users will tell you which organism is making the UTI, so the doctors can prescribe the antibody. One of the biggest things that programs like Longitude Prize add to the community is that they enable everybody catch the attention of a big problem. And those could be policy makers, governments, clinicians, and also inventors and innovators like us and our team. As one of the advisors and jury members of Longitude Prize, I can say that scientists across the world have got wonderful ideas. They are developing wonderful methodologies. We have got wonderful applications coming to the Longitude Jury. This was something very interesting for us because not only is it going to be a point of care diagnostic, it's going to be a low cost diagnostic with absolute complete levels of sensitivity. And if this gets developed for India, it would have tremendous value. The Longitude Prize envisions a world with correct diagnosis, followed by more accurate treatment, so that all infections can be dealt with responsibly. We can't stand still anymore, whether there's resistance in the healthcare sector, our food or the environment, 
Together, we need to get the reckless use of antibiotics under control. The goal, after all, is not only just to extend the effectiveness of the antibiotics we have, but also to preserve the lives of the global population now and in the future.